What's up, y'all? I got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. What would a man gain by marrying you versus being you, in a relationship with you? Um, I don't know because again, oh. stupid. <laughs> I'll answer the question for him. Nothing. nothing. A man has nothing to gain by marrying a woman except losing half of everything. She's still going to she's still gonna cook, she's still going to clean, and she still ain't going to shut up. What am I gaining? Going to the goddamn wedding, uh, to the damn jeweler, buying a $20,000 ring, paying for a $50,000 wedding that I wasn't getting as a boyfriend. That's it the depends question. on we on a financially equal playing field. What do you bring to the table? What Stupid. do you mean? That's what I'm asking. I bring me. That's not enough. Every woman these days, every woman thinks that bringing me is just enough. Can you imagine if men started saying that? Hey, you this shit up. Your money don't mean shit to me. It depends on the man that I marry. I could marry the richest in the world and I could walk all over that Cow. every day. I'm going to be a different wife to him than I'm going to be to somebody Ma else. Ma so I cannot tell you what exactly. Why? Can you tell me what you bring to the table to a marriage though? Because you're diverting still. I'm still you not diverting. <laughs> she done took six whole minutes. I sat there and counted. A bull telling what a man ain't supposed to be and what a man's supposed to be. I asked the one question. What do you bring to the table? They can't answer it. Fellas, if you ask a woman that question and she can't give you... If a woman says she hey, brings for herself... This guy is cooking. This man is absolutely cooking, bro. <laughs> me. Why is it most modern women think that me is enough? Why do they think that me is enough? Gents, let me know in the comments, what do you want a woman to bring to a relationship? For me, it's I want you to be able to cook clean, do all the, the home home duties. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to cook. I don't want to have to clean. I don't want to have to go do the grocery shopping. I want you to take care of me when I'm sick. But I also want you to be my piece and not a piece of the problem. I want you to keep my stomach full, my nuts empty, and I want you to be quiet. Simple as that. It's really not a tough equation. I think men are pretty simple, but let me know, chat. What are the things that you would want in a relationship? Personally, those are the things I want, and that's that's what Cass delivers, and I have the final say in what happens. So if I say something and she doesn't agree, it's my say at the end of the day. Just it is what it is, and that's the way you kind of have got to uh, you got to have it. Um, I have a couple questions. Maybe y'all can help me out. Okay. Oh, well, good morning to you as well, and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Here in Florida since I just moved here about four months ago. Um, men are very different. They like don't court you. Like whatever happened to flowers and phone calls and good morning, babe, and good night, babe. And I'm sorry, but you look every day at 40 something. Shots fired! The courting is done. You had your chance to be on the court. You're no longer on the court. Now you're in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> the courting is done. Let's go get lunch or breakfast or hey do you want to go look at the sunset i don't fucking know well first of all let's say this it's not just in florida it's happening all over the united states mm -hmm. and from what i'm hearing from my friends overseas it's starting to happen in many of the other western countries as well and i have to say you're right men have stopped courting women they've stopped approaching them and asking them out on dates They've stopped doing the whole flowers and all that other stuff. And sunsets, well, they're more about fishing now than spending time with women. But in a nutshell, what happened? Why did men suddenly stop courting? Well, I hate to break it to you, but it's because of women. Women are the reason men are no longer courting. Women like these. Leave women alone. Please do not approach me. Stop approaching women. Leave women alone. This is a serious matter. <laughs> So as you can see, it's women who were telling men to leave you alone, to stop courting you. And we heard that, and that's exactly what we're doing. Now it's incumbent on you to court us. The tables have turned, ladies, and I understand it's confusing. Well, chivalry is dead and women killed it. Ladies, you wanted equality? Welcome to the Equality Club. <laughs> Welcome on in. And that's why you're saying things like... Like, that's gone now. Like men don't do that it's like you gotta be the man and that's so unattractive when you gotta pull out your masculine i'll show you something you can pull out energy because the dude is too soft oh darling it's not because we're too soft it's that we're in our soft guy era there you go two entirely different grizzle, things grizzle. 
You see, men have Can we get some drizzles in the chat? Long not valued themselves. That has now changed. Men know their worth, know their value, know what they bring to the table, which is having them now question, what are you bringing to the table? An answer most of you still don't have. Like, wake up, dudes. Like, be a man. <laughs> and once Stupid. again, women show how they actually believe that hurling insults, putting down men... This is why it's always a sign. Shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. ...trying to imply that they're unmanly, unworthy, because they refuse to cower down, to bow down to your every demand, and instead have now developed their own standards and expectations, ones you know you can't meet because you're not willing to. That, in a nutshell, is what's going on here. And why you think men are going to want to court you after you say things like that is beyond me. Build something. I don't know. I'll cook. You build. I mean, on a date. Do these women just think this is like Little House on the Prairie? <laughs> little Annie on the Prairie. I'm going to just go build something, and then you're going to be in the kitchen cooking. Come on in, honey. It's time for dinner. Like, what are they? Is this for real? Like, take the lead. Take the lead? For what? What are we going to get out of it? For real? Cook? I can cook my own meals. I don't need you for that. I can build my own stuff, to be sure. So far, you haven't offered us anything other than expectations and demands. I don't understand. It's like situationships all Stupid. day long. It, it just... It's so unattractive. I don't get it. You attract what you are. Shots fired! Women are marketers and men are salesmen. I say this all the time, gents. If you're sick of what you're getting, it's probably because you're selling a certain product and attracting a certain type of customer. You don't go to the you don't go to the Apple store trying to buy a Samsung phone, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't go to a blue jean store. You don't go to what? Well, you don't go to Hollister looking to buy an iPad, do you? I'm just saying, ladies. All right, let me help you out here. I understand why you're not getting it. And I mean no disrespect here, but what's going on is the female brain at work. Because as I say all the time, taking responsibility to women is like kryptonite to Superman. Facts. It's simply not something they're capable of handling. Mm -hmm. So when they're forced to confront reality, when they have to accept and acknowledge that it's their actions that have caused this dilemma for them, their brain shuts down. It goes into complete meltdown, and they can't understand why things are the way they are, because in order to do so, it would mean having to acknowledge that the way they've mistreated men, put them down, and taken advantage of them for decades now, has caused men to walk away from them, to walk away from dating, to walk away from relationships, to walk away from marriage. Feminism sold women this belief that they could be happy and get it all if they just kept demanding more and more from men, while Stupid. at the same time telling them they should not offer anything to men in return. Well, women grow up knowing what to expect from a man, but they never learn what men expect from them. This is the great divide, as we shall call it. Women just go through the world on easy mode. They always know that a man should be this, he should be that, he should be this, that, and a third. But then when we ask, well, what can you do for a man? They, they bring up stuff like, I'm kind, I'm humble, I'm empathetic, I'm caring. Okay, so is my freaking dog. <laughs> You're not bringing anything that's unique. Us as men, we have to bring things that are unique. We have to bring a lifestyle. We have to bring money. We have to pr provide. We have to protect. These are things that are unique because, like, not every person can do this. Every person can be nice. It's not hard. It should be completely a one-way street. Well, ladies, how's that working out for you? Apparently, not so good. Apparently. It, it, can somebody explain it? Or is it me? She's a runner. She's I, a track star. I, I don't know. Is it you? Yes. <laughs> Duh. I don't this know. is why I say life is a mirror, not a window. Let me know. All right, again, I'm not trying to be mean here. Being honest with you. Is it you? In a matter of speaking, yes. Well, if you got to think, dude. If you're not happy with where your life is right now, the common denominator with where you're at in life is you. The fastest and quickest way you can change something about your life is to change yourself. Somebody want to carry it? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. The fastest way you can change something about your life is you. How am I going to change something about your life without changing yourself? This is why I always say, dude, 
Where you're at in your life is a culmination and an amalgamation of all the decisions you've made up until this point. You're not happy with where your life is? Change the way you look at your life. Change some decisions. Do something different because what you're doing right now clearly is not working. But also, no. Because, you see, you've been conditioned to be the way you are. Mm -hmm. Your mother and your fellow sisters have taught you to be that way. To have all these expectations and demands of men while offering nothing in return. Facts. You've all been conditioned from the time you were born to be that way. Mm -hmm. And your mothers were conditioned by their mothers to be that way. And the generation before that and the generation before that. That's and why I say all this trauma is generational. Single mothers raise single mothers. How's a single mom going to raise a woman that's actually going to be a, a good mom? Single moms can't do that. Single, mom. single moms don't know how to be single moms. Single moms don't know how to raise wives. They're not even a wife themselves. And then you ask these modern women, well, who's supposed to teach these women? You are, but you're a single mom. Shots fired. How are you going to teach a woman to be a wife when you can't even be a wife yourself? That's like me teaching somebody how to be a pro football player, and I played on the seventh grade B team. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it, what do I know? I don't know how to be a pro in football. It's gotten progressively worse with each generation, to the point where men have said, no more, we're done. We're not putting up with it anymore. If you want courting to go on, you're going to have to court us. Because the reality is, today's modern women offer nothing to men. Literally nothing. And they've been conditioned to believe that that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. And until that changes, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, things are going to be the way they are. So stock up on the boxed wine, get plenty of Ambien, and make sure that your cats are well fed. <laughs> Because that's your future, ladies. It's the one you wanted. Now you get to enjoy it. My man is he cooking. He definitely hit the nail hard on the head. My nope. man is straight cooking here. He knows what he's talking about. Men need to be heard. Go check out his channel, man. This is this is one of those like old uh, older wise guys. Like I like this guy. Been through life, learned the trials and tribulations. Got a really good mindset on like you know what men actually go through. So check out his channel. I really don't know when men became so comfortable commenting on everything that a woman does, from how they talk, how they dress, how they look, how they act. Particularly the, I hate women who did, no, you hate women that stop there. I don't know where this started at, especially the posting it on social media, like, oh, women, da 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 da, -da. It's Women, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> And the thing is, I don't hate women. <laughs> I mean, I've been in like a seven-year relationship. Uh, I'm a provider. Like, Cass doesn't work. Like, bro, I got it made. She cooks, she cleans, she does all of it. We don't hate women around here. We just... The thing is, if you want societal norms to change, you have to expose it, and you have to do it regularly. You have to do it often. This is why I post every single day, because I'm like, we want things to change. We have to bring this to the light. Like... With change comes repetition. You have to have repetition for societal norms to change, and that's why we do it. Y'all do know y'all can be gay, right? Be so for real. Women come on this app and talk shit about everything a man does. Mm -hmm. Talk shit about his height, his weight, the clothes that he wears, the cologne that he has, the friendships that he has, the relationship that he has with his mom. You talk shit about him being a provider. If he's a good provider, then he's a fucking simp. If he's not a provider and he does nothing, then he's a bum. If he works all day to provide for you, then he's working too much and doesn't like you and probably is cheating. But if he This is why I always say, ladies, if you want a guy that makes a lot of money, don't expect to get a lot of time. If you want a lot of his time, don't expect him to make a lot of money. If he doesn't work at all, then he's a bum. If he takes you on a coffee date and actually wants to get to know you, then that's low effort. But if he takes you to a five-star dining and doesn't say a word, then that means he only wants to get in your pants. You talk shit about whether or not he's husband material based on what your friends are doing. You talk shit about him being emotionally stunted because he can't read your mind. You talk shit about him being a narcissist because he's trying to set boundaries with you and expectations with you and you don't like it. I'll talk shit about his income and if he doesn't make enough, then he's a bum. If he makes too much and doesn't spoil you, then he's still a bum. If he actually shows interest in you and it cares for you in the beginning of a relationship, then that means he's manipulative and he's love bombing you. But then if he stops doing all of that stuff altogether, then he's in low effort man and doesn't give a shit about you. Bro, let what? me tell you something. Love bombing, that stuff works, buddy boy. <laughs> In college, this was my tactic. I didn't know it was called love bombing at the time, but in college, this is what I would do, bro. It was always my goal. Any new girl I was talking to, I wanted them to be obsessed with me as fast as possible. That's why you got them on the hook. 
get them obsessed with you as quick as possible. Feed them every line that they want to hear. I want you to be my girl. I can see a future with you. You'd be a great mother. Start feeding them those lines, get them obsessed, and then immediately distance yourself. Immediately stop replying for like a day. And then the next day she's like, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, what's good? Be super short with her. She will get addicted to you so fast, bro. I, I didn't know this was what it was called back in the day, love bombing, but I figured it out because once again, I did things that got results. I didn't do things that were moral and ethical. I did things that got me attention, got me results, got me girls in the sheets, point blank period. Love bombing works. I don't know if it works when you're a little bit older. I'm 34 now. I don't know if love bombing would work now, but dude, back in the day when I was in college, bro, that stuff worked. Oh my God. It, it worked like WD-40 on a squeaky door. It worked so well. Let's not forget entire social media pages dedicated to their deadbeat baby daddies, but right, it's only men talking about the women. And last time I checked, sticking up for yourself against somebody who insults you does not make you gay. Some of y'all have And that's another thing with these modern women. They are so quick to just be homophobic. They're like, oh, you're gay. Like, think if we said that. Oh, you don't like us, guys? You must be lesbian. That'd be so stupid. Stupid. It's based off of people that you hate, but yet your caption says men should just start a group and date each other. And the reality is, is women want men that are like women. And let's be so for real. Women can dish it, but they can't fucking take it. And obviously, you know that because you turned your comments off. Ooh. The irony of all of it is Ooh. so... Shots fired! <laughs> Let her cook. Many women talk all this shit about decentering men, but they're so addicted to talking about shitty men because they can't attract good men in the first place so their entire identity is wrapped up in talking shit and bashing men okay bye here's the my girl is cooking get her a chef hat i like her though she's super based i'd love to interview her i don't know who she is though um ridiculously based but we need more women like this preaching the gospel head if somebody's fucking you around and you want to fuck with them back then this is exactly what you do save his snapchat in chat and then leave him on red that works an absolute charm for getting into someone's head because what do you mean you're going to save my snap in chat and then leave me on red they will 100 percent double text you if you do that make a private story and add him to it obviously and post on it for like a week so it's not obvious that you're doing this but if he follows you on tiktok you don't need to make that private story but Stupid. if he doesn't follow you on tiktok and he won't see this then make the private story if he is a brunette you're gonna get your phone up look hot as fuck and post a thirst trap and the caption on the thirst trap is gonna be when he's blonde and if you Stupid. really want to get more into it, if he's blonde with blue eyes, make the caption when he's brunette with brown eyes. Yeah. Either put that on your private story or post it on TikTok, whichever one you know that he's going to see. It's harmless, but like it'll, it'll get him thinking like, oh. At like 6 p.m., text him and say, what are you doing tonight? When he replies, you're going to leave it. As hard as it is, you are going to leave that Snapchat right there or the text message right there and you're not going to reply. You're not going to open it. And then at like 2 a.m. you're going to get your fucking ass out of bed. You're going to go sit in a car in the passenger seat. If this is on Snapchat, you're going to send him a photo of you in the passenger seat and you're going to say, sorry, I just got home. And if you're texting on any other platform, you're just going to message him at that time and say, sorry, I just got home. Even if you have to say. Imagine just being honest. Shots fired! Going through all of the mental gymnastics to try to swoon a man. This is crazy to me. Like women actually think about this stuff. An alarm to do. Another harmless one is at like 2 a.m. Just message him his name and don't say anything until like 4 p.m. the next day. He's obviously gonna wake up to that, so he's gonna. I be love it when a woman tells her bop lore. She's a runner, she's a track star. <laughs> Let's get some bop lores in the chat. Curious the entire day, like what you wanted to say and what you didn't get to say. That was way too much. Or you can be like, can we talk? And then don't reply until can the next day. Talk? Don't do that to someone if they have anxiety though. But if someone has fucked you over, do it. If single women mm. keep other women single. I mean, yeah, facts. Single women keep women single. But I cannot believe all of the effort and mental fortitude this woman is go this woman is going through to try to justify just bad behavior this is all very malicious chat let me know do you think any of this is sincere to me it's all very malicious now to her point i said some things earlier about love bombing that stuff actually works and maybe this stuff actually works but i feel like their their strategy is much more convoluted and like planned out and just very malicious you telling a girl that you see a future with her is just a simple line you can feed her this stuff is like calculated this is premeditated <laughs> this is stuff that you would see in like a court case be like she did all of that 
This is so unnecessary in my opinion. Date as soon as the woman showed up because she uses filters on social media. Good man. Five things I started doing when I turned 30. If you're like me and you're in your early to mid 30s, you may have started to notice some changes happening here. I've got one month left till my 20s are over. My body's not younger, but my brain isn't older. Tell me how I'm 30. Maybe that's the problem. Three years old, but I feel like I'm 20 until I actually hang out with a 20 year old and then I'm like, nope. I'm 30. If you're in your late 20s, early 30s, and you're still single, and you are like, I swear I'm going to be single forever. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. I feel you. Because it's my 32nd birthday, I'm going to share 32. 32nd birthday? <laughs> Y'all ever seen that, uh, what's that movie with Elvira? Looks like her cousin. Life lessons. Ladies who are over 35, do not despair. A lot of girls, once they start pushing that 30 mark, they're like, okay, I got to lower my standards a little bit because it's well, not working. You know, out. we have that pressure of time and right. eggs, and mm -hmm. I feel like society does a really good job of reminding us, reminding us of that. <laughs> See, yeah. Society. This is why we have the channel. Society does a good job of pressuring them to make a decision and take their lives a little bit more seriously. That's what we got to do here, gents. Timeline? Like, always a bridesmaid, never yeah, a bride. Right, right. and like, once you hit 30, your eggs start shriveling. So apparently there's this thing that sexist men on the internet say happens to women when we turn 30, and it's called hitting... I think there are so many women in this sort of situation who end up single in their 30s who are amazing and they don't seem to be meeting. <laughs> so amazing that they're alone. <laughs> She's just amazing. Such a good woman. So good that she can't even find a man. <laughs> the right. Well, I love you know, it when a woman makes a lot of sense. Or a, guy, a guy that matches up to their level. But I think there's something to be said about the fact that when you are... Yeah, the ones that settle end up getting divorced because they didn't get the, the guy that they wanted. And the one... I think that's the Manosphere guy. I can barely understand him, though, so I'm going to keep it a buck. We're going to skip on past that, buddy boy. Um, Accent is thicker than cold peanut butter. <laughs> Women, jaded women jaded who women, hit the wall women who have hit the wall so i just wanted to briefly touch on this um obviously i'm on tiktok but i have met that's a man man so so many nice women and i'm so happy because even my one-to-one -one sessions i've made so many friendships and people are so nice here but there is like a small minority of comments that say i have hit the wall yeah. i'm just here for money i'm bitter and i'm giving really bad advice to young women older women especially those that give advice and make money from giving dating advice they all give bad advice yeah i agree with that they all give because the thing is why would they want to give you good advice so you can go find a man they'd much rather give you bad advice so you keep coming back 200 iq move it's kind of like therapy people nowadays go to therapy and it's like a it's like a lifestyle it's like i go to therapy i'm in therapy bro you should be in therapy six months year tops depending on what happened then you should get out of therapy therapy's not a lifestyle it's a phase you should go through it and get out of it you shouldn't keep going uh, comment on that. I do not hate men, so it's quite the opposite. I really don't hate men. I honestly don't. And um, I just believe. And also, don't take advice from somebody who's not in a If you want to be in a relationship and you're taking advice from a single woman, that's stupid. Stupid. I was talking to, when I did the Jake Rattlesnake interview, it's on my channel, but I was talking to him. It's like, I don't take advice from people that I wouldn't trade lives with. Like, if you're going to give me financial advice and you're a bum, you can bet I'm not listening. <laughs> right? But if Jake is going to give me advice about YouTube, you can bet I'm a listen. If Andrew Wilson's going to give me advice about debating, you can bet I'm a listen. If Brian from the Whatever Podcast is going to give me advice about how to run a podcast, you bet I'm a listen. But why would I take advice from somebody that I wouldn't trade lives with? Especially in that instance. So if somebody's giving you fashion advice and they can't dress, don't listen to them. Somebody giving you relationship advice, they're not in a relationship, don't listen to them. Take it in, in one ear and out the other that if you are a woman with options it's always best to go for the best option here's the thing bro a lot of men you ain't got no options that's why you're alone baby girl if you had options you would have had a man you would have had a man if you had options but you ain't got no options stop the cap stop lying lying to all these young women she even sound like a man fired. thought she had a frog in her throat Thank goodness gracious thought she was on the third season of fraggle rock you guys ever seen fraggle rock that's an old show. That's like that. That's, that's like first tier uh, Sesame Street. This is the chick from the thumbnail. This, bro, this clip is wild. I want to be passed around so bad, but my boyfriend just wants a monogamous relationship. 
It's 2024. Expecting to be with one person for your entire life is like unreasonable. I'm a young 18 year old Latina. I'm trying to get my face blasted by multiple men. Like I haven't even had a quickie in a bathroom stall. I have so much to live for. And you're telling me that I have to stay with this one guy because I love him so much. But there's literally guys out there with 13 inch meats waiting to destroy me. It would just be so unfortunate if I were to go my whole entire life without getting piped by at least a hundred different people just to see who I like the most. Here's the thing. She's a runner, she's a track star. <laughs> <laughs> just so many one-liners. I want to get piped by at least a hundred bodies. I want a 13-inch meat. What are we talking about? Do you work at Subway? 13-inch meats? Want to get your face blasted? Go work at Tesla. Good lord, this is crazy. Blasting off like NASA. Let's jump in the Reddit. Man, these, some, man this is some of this stuff is crazy. Feminists becoming self aware. This is from uh, Harry Net. Feminists are really becoming self aware. Let's jump into the subreddit. I'm becoming afraid of my hatred for men. Bro, she got that ramen noodle Justin Timberlake hair. You guys remember that from uh, NSYNC? Bro, that's that ramen noodle hair. It started as a fun little... You know those TikToks where people are like, uh, don't make jokes about having kinks because your brain doesn't know you're joking and it actually develops them. I think I joked way too much about hating men and now I am genuinely in a sexist way. I... I Get it out. I hate them. Like, in a way that a white man from Alabama hates black people, <laughs> I hate men. I walk past them, and I want to kill them, and they aren't even doing anything. I just see them, and it fills me with rage. I don't know how to stop. It's gone way too far. I, it well, hey, at, at least she's becoming a little bit more self-aware. Kudos to her. You know, you know, guys, I always give kudos. I always give kudos. Um, but good Lord, man, these modern women. This stuff is wild to me. Loki, what are you doing back there, bro? Are you chilling? Like Krillin? Or a villain? Hmm? <laughs> he cracks me up, dude. So, bro, I had, I had um, somebody from Instagram hit me up. Shout out to this guy, bro. His name is Stuart Soulfrost. Hey, Levi, I'm Stuart Soulfrost 00. If you see me in the chat from the UK and you said in one of your videos about having all the rhymes and phrases you came up with listed, so I have 26 of them. This man is, I told him, I told him he was my hero. <laughs> You're beat at best. Polish the old pork sword. Chivalry's dead and women killed it. I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. She is peanut butter and jealous. End of this epidemic. For real though, my dildo. Loki, go to your spot. I need my co-star. Let's run it back, Turbo. Comparison is a thief of joy. Life is a mirror, not a window. I'm not going to play another man's safe game. In there like swimwear. S Loki, stop licking your undergrundle. I'm not wearing a cape, chat. Are we wearing a cape? <laughs> <laughs> if he's good enough for you, then he's good enough for a few. Women are marketers. Men are salesmen. Bro, this dude killed it. So shout out to you, Stuart Soul Frost. I really do appreciate you, man. Um, shout out to you, bro. <laughs> he actually did it. So thank you. I'll start putting some of these on a t-shirt. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. We've sold around 60 to 70 copies now. Shout out to you guys. Seems like you guys are getting a lot of value out of that. I'm glad. Um, but yeah, man, I really appreciate you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.